Hello, everyone. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm Konstantin, also known as Everzet on Twitter or GitHub or whenever you can find me on social networks and stuff. Um, I am BDD practice manager in this company, uh, which is Invica. And I've been asked by our marketing team to talk about something for 15, 20 minutes. And uh, I think I can use it as an opportunity to, to basically take away from me the load of discussions and explanations of what BDD is that I do again and again every month. So I can just present you in the shortest form I can think of what BDD means for me. It isn't final explanation of what BDD is. For different people, BDD will mean different things. But that's what BDD means for me at this moment in time. And I think there is a slight spin on the definition that might interest you. So, BDD, also known as behavior driven development, is a practice created by then North uh, back in the days, and it has very specific means to solve very particular problem of communication between developers and business, right? And the way it solves this problem is through using a communicational patterns like examples. So going back, if you think about software delivery or software development, on the highest possible or on the most abstract level, it looks like this. You have usually three people in three entities involved or three roles involved in the project. You have a business person that usually comes up with some business idea that he wants to realize in life. Either it's to minimize the cost of maintenance on, on his ongoing project or create new project that will bring a lot of value or revenue streams into his work or maybe changing and exploring new areas for the projects. There is some business idea which business usually communicates in form of requirements to another kind of role or another kind of person which is usually a delivery team, developers. And what they do is they transform those requirements or business conversation, business language into the language that they, that they understand and can comprehend, which is usually some sort of programming language, right? So this is the classical pattern where you, business creates, the business has a need, which is described to some extent, sometimes better, sometimes worse in form of requirements, which are then communicated to developers which then transform those requirements into the form or language they comprehend which is developed programming language which they then pass to machine which again interprets this language into something it can understand right so usually some set of programming logic or programming code for the purpose of this talk, I will presume that computers are actually talking in the language that developers can understand. And it's really close to truth with um, modern programming languages and system languages which abstract all the hardware logic away from us, right? So in terms of communication, this is how, how it happens. There is an entity that talks in pure business language, communicates business ideas and has business requirements, which are then passed to developers, transformed either in their heads immediately or in, in, in months of requirements analysis into the programming core or high level architecture, which then is passed to the computer, which executes it. And hopefully that gives some feedback to the client, right? In form of working project or working software. Now, there is an issue in this scheme, and the issue is that whenever business speaks and explains ideas, 
Those ideas might use the same language developers will use, but sometimes will imply different meaning. The classical example of that, if you think about the commer com uh, commercial sphere or banking sphere, and if you think about business talking about new requirements which could be implement new accounting system, implying credit accounting system or debit accounting system. Developers will here implement accounting system but will imply system accounting system or user accounting system or basically user management and registration. So this problem when both sides of conversation use same language, we use same terms, but imply different meaning, has a name in the software industry and it's called cost of translation. And the cost of translation is a bad thing, is generally a bad thing, is because usual communication happens one way. So whenever business says I want something, uh, and developers hear exactly what they said, but imply a different meaning, the time it goes to actually spot the problem in the waterfall environment or the classical software development where it takes years to deliver software, takes years to spot some those issues where there is a basic misunderstanding. Now we solve this problem to a certain extent with Agile, where now we have shorter iterations and the problem is solved or spotted in terms of weeks. It's not weeks. Right? So we spot those issues after a couple of weeks, which is still a problem, especially when you're working in very agile market or environment. And if you're implementing this big, very important requirement for the business, like accounting system, right? So the way BDD tries to solve this problem is by creating this feedback loop between developer and the business and creating this engagement or interaction where whenever developer gets a new requirement from the business or asks for a new requirement from the business, developer asks for examples of this requirement. So whenever developer hears, I need a new accounting system from client, he might imply this is user management system, but immediately developer asks, can you give me an example of how this accounting system will be used? And as soon as business starts giving him an example, for, for, for a particular example of this talk is, um, let's say we have a person with an account. When this person wants to take money out of this account, we need to check that there is a balance there. Immediately developer sees that the conversation is not about user management, it's more about account management, right? And this requirement has completely different implicit meaning to this than developer initially thought. And this conversation happens in a matter of minutes, tops days. So you can spot those issues much, much, much faster and much sooner. And that's, in essence, what BDD is. So BDD is about eliminating translation cost from the business to developers, using the language of examples. Now, the interesting thing about examples is that in order to provide examples and understand examples by developers, you need to teach developers to understand language business uses when it provides examples. And it's not programming language, it's not architectural language, it's not design language, right? It's not programming logic. It's usually business language. So in order to make this happen or make this possible, you need to teach developers to talk in the same language that business does. Right? And that's where we get, start getting side effects or additional benefits of BDD, which we see a lot of the times in the in internal and external teams we teach. And this happens, this creates this process where developers can improve systems, but not only by writing code, but also having conversation with the business. Because when you have that divergent experiences or uh, expertises involved in the conversation about the business, what starts happening is be, be, developers starts coming up with better ideas of how to realize 
solutions for particular business problems. And sometimes developers will propose much better ideas biz than business thought of, and those ideas wouldn't need to be implemented in this form of programming. So to a to certain extent, developers start being developers, but not only for code, but also for business development, for business projects, right? Developers start helping business to realize his businesses. And that's very important part of it. That's very important part of BDD, because BDD is all about delivering software that matters, right? There is an interesting after effect if you look at the software like this, because BDD for quite some time, for years of, of me and other people practicing it, was focusing on this area. But if you look at the bigger picture, if you look at what happens with project on the wild scale, there is still this thing that currently nags a lot of people, right? Because even though developers do speak in the business language, they do express and understand problems in the language that business does, as soon as they go to computer and start writing programs, they immediately forget about all these business discussions and the conversations. And whatever code they write to computers doesn't fit back to the business understanding. So there is a lot of things, there is a lot of problem solving and solutions, uh, solution discussions that happen in the programming phase that is never fed back to the business. So what we're ending up with, we're ending up with the realization that there is a still translation cost. Because we are translating essentially this business to the code at this level and it's never fed back. And in the recent years, there is a big resurgence of another practice, especially in the PHP community, which tries to solve that particular problem, which tries to improve the way we write software, improve the way we architect systems, so that we can eliminate translation costs between business developers and the code or our, our computers. And as you could imagine, the way we do this is essentially the same, right? We're creating a feedback. But just because it's a little bit more ingrained, in addition to using examples, we need to also create additional patterns or tools to have this conversation, right? Because you cannot expect business to talk in the language that computers can understand. And you also cannot expect computers to suddenly start talking in the language business understands. There is no computer language I'm aware of which clearly one-to-one -one represents the language that any business can understand. So you need to create new language that all sides in this conversation can use. And this language is usually called ubiquitous language, right? Shared language. And the way it works is that we realize that we cannot use neither business language, neither code as a way to conversate, but we need to use something in between. Combination of programming logic and the business and use it to talk. And the practice of creating this ubiquitous language, this shared language that we use in discussions throughout the project, this practice is called domain-driven design. So that's why when people are talking about BDD or DDD, really experienced behavior-driven development practitioners are saying BDD and DDD are complementary practices. It's because they both are essentially solving the same problem, cost of translation. It's just they are focusing on different levels. And by applying those practices throughout your system, you're creating a unique communicational environment where business speaks in the same language that the developers can understand. Developers can contribute to, the f to further enrich understanding of the business of his problems, help solve those problems, and even when developers are writing high, uh, highly technical programming solutions or code, this contributes to general shared understanding of the problem space everybody has. So even when developers are writing programs, they can contribute to the way business sees his business and business can help developers write programs. Not by pairing with them, not by sitting next to them and writing the code, but by just talking together sharing their understanding and basically pushing every single message or word we use in discussions of the requirements down to the lines of code. 
And this results essentially in creation of software that not only works, but also matters. And that's what BDD is for me nowadays. Thank you very much.